Yay Networks. Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I'm your host, Sibla Muti, and I can't wait for you to hear all of the Great Girlfriend magic on today's show. So without further ado, grab something great to drink, grab your pen and your paper, and get ready for this week's episode. Enjoy! Happy Wednesday, great girlfriends. Happy Wednesday, wherever you are. I hope you're enjoying a fabulous day and I hope you've checked in with your great girlfriends and sent them a ton of love. I am so excited because it's nothing like when I have a dose of my hometown on the show. So first of all, two doses of hometown. My mom is here in the studio. Can you say hi, mom, from afar? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. I got my mama in the studio with me today. This is her first time here. So she's actually experiencing the live recording. And let me tell you something super special that any any daughter will appreciate. Okay, so I don't eat greens, right? Like I don't, I don't consume, I, people love greens and I think they're amazing if you love them. But if you don't love them, then you're like me. You You, you just haven't found the right like the ones, the right ones. So in short, my mom made a batch of greens during COVID that I was like, okay, this is the batch. It's got spinach. I taste, I don't know what they are. I don't know what greens are what. Point is, they were amazing. So she's in California and she's like, she wants to get greens. And I'm thinking, oh man, not in my neighborhood. I already know, like... <laughs> There are no greens in my neighborhood. I just, I just know. So quick story, we go to Whole Foods and we are in there looking for greens and we thought it would be simple. So we asked the gentleman for turnips and he brought us the bulb. He was like, yeah, this is a turn. We're like, no, the green. He said, oh no, they don't sell that. By the time they ship it to us, this is what we have, the bulb. And so I was like, okay, Whole Foods is not doing it, not having it. We go over to uh, another grocery store nearby. I won't name it. And they don't have it. We go to one more grocery store. We get two uh, bunch of, bu- bunches bunches of greens. Because see, I don't even buy them. We got two bunches of greens. And she was like, yeah, that's cute. But I'm going to need like four if I'm really going to do this, right? All right, cool. So a friend of ours told us to go to another grocery store that is at least 15, 20 minutes away. We go 15, 20, 20 minutes away. They have two more bunches. So and And it's the wrong green. But I thought I was doing good. But in short, we got the greens, she cooked them up, and they were amazing. And what I've come to realize is that the person who makes greens for me has to read the Old Testament of the Bible. I came to that conclusion. I came to the conclusion that you got to read Obadiah, Amos, Ezekiel. You know, you got to get all up in the Old Testament passages because you need a root in your green. Because the way you put your foot and, and your root and your spirit into those greens, mom, was absolutely amazing. I just wanted you to know. Thank you, I might officially eat greens now. I don't know for sure, but I eat I eat her said batch of greens. Those were the ones that I liked. <laughs> and I'm so happy about Thank that. You so much. But secondly, I have a guest today who is literally coming in live from Memphis, Tennessee. And I love this. Her purpose is not only to discover the beauty in all things, but also to help others find that beauty in the things that surround them every day. What a beautiful purpose, right? I think if we all could take a dose of that into what we do in discovering beauty where we are and really honoring the beauty of the environments around us, our lives would be far more enriched. So I'm super happy to bring on my guest today, Carmion Hamilton. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm amazing. Today is a beautiful day in Memphis. The weather couldn't be any more perfect. Um, It's been a busy one and I'm excited for you to be a part of my day. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're looking like a ray of sunshine too, oh, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, had to, I had to come ready for the girlfriends. <laughs> hey, I love it. I love it. I love it. I, if, are you okay if I read a quick piece of your bio? Of course. Because I think you've done some amazing work. All right. So Carmion is a Memphis-based environmental curator, interior designer, merchandising consultant, blogger, and content creator behind the brand Newbie Interiors. And she's the star of HGTV's Reno, My Rental, and the upcoming show, Turn Your House Around. She is also the wife to Marcus and mother to Davin. How amazing is it that you have had this robust career? You have a full life. You are uh, managing being a wife as well. 
and you're looking like you do nothing all day but lay back and just take in the sun and consume all of the glory of the nature around you. <laughs> How I, are you getting all that sleep? <laughs> I, I wish that were the case. Um, I'm actually getting a ton less sleep nowadays and I'm not sure if you guys were aware um, I was married, but I lost my husband about a year and a half ago. Well, almost no two way. years ago. Yes, my, my husband passed away a couple weeks before the the premiere of Reno My Rental in the summer of 2021. Um, he was killed by an intoxicated driver on his motorcycle. No so way. I am a widow. I'm not a wife anymore. So a single yes. mom nowadays. Wow. What a shift. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so you different. have had a full evolution over the past few years. Absolutely. One thousand percent. Oh, my goodness. OK, so listen, this episode should be about skincare. It should be about <laughs> self-care. <laughs> It should be about pivots. Mm -hmm. It should be about, right? It mm -hmm. should be about learning to evolve with Indeed. the world that comes with, because the, it, the world hits you and you have a choice. You can either roll with the tide or you can resist and you find yourself in this space of friction, right? Indeed. Indeed. Oh my goodness, Carmion, there's so much to that. I want to know before we get into all of those facets of your story, um, just a little bit about who you are. A favorite time of year, winter, spring, summer, or fall? Fall. I oh. was born in October and I love the, the cooling down before it gets cold. Because, you know, the looks of fall from the colors in nature to the colors and the looks of fashion. Those are my absolute yes. favorites. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. And a great pea coat in the fall oh, is indeed. like... It's it's I everything. Am a, a woman of many coats. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. What's your absolute favorite food? Beans and cornbread. <laughs> beans and cornbread. Beans really? And cornbread. What kind of bean? Uh, I grew up, my grandmother made pinto beans, but they were made okay. with ham hocks. So uh -huh. beans, that version of beans, pinto beans, brown beans and cornbread. So I'm all on your plate now. Are you mashing the cornbread into Absolutely. the... Absolutely, yes, ma'am. You're doing the whole mix. It's like a bowl of cereal. It sure is. Oh, yes. my gosh. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Is there buttermilk involved in this, too? I don't, I don't do buttermilk. I don't do buttermilk. But um, okay. I, I actually sprinkle a little bit of sugar on it. Um, so, Get yeah, it is here. almost very much like a cereal, but a very chunky, like the consistency of oatmeal. Like a chunky oatmeal. That's how I like Get mine. Here. Mm -hmm. You blew my mind with that. I thought you were going to give me some lavish Italian meal oh, that was like. No, honey, I'm from <laughs> Arkansas, from the country. <laughs> right. You're like pintos and cornbread. That uh -huh. would be my like favorite. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. Favorite place to travel? Oh, I just had an experience in Sweden, and I think. That is now, it was the most amazing trip. So Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden. Nice, nice. They have really great laws that support women too, by the mm -hmm. way, in Sweden. They do. <laughs> they mm -hmm. do. They mm -hmm. do. Okay, last TV show that you binged? Uh, Bel Air, the new version of Fresh oh, Prince. Oh, the second, the season two mm -hmm. of Bel Air? Okay, okay. I got to get into season two. I saw season one. I was hooked. And so I'm yes. looking forward to that. Yes, it oh is. Oh, my goodness. That show is a okay. Yes. It really is. It really is. They did perfect casting for that show. Perfect casting. Yes. I wouldn't change a single character. Okay, so how does a girl eating pinto beans and cornbread <laughs> from <laughs> West Memphis, Arkansas, mm -hmm. evolve into the space where you're now on television, you are renowned as a designer, you're well respected as a curator and a tastemaker. How do you make that journey forward? Well, I absolutely would not be where I am today if it weren't for the evolution of social media. Um, I chose the college I went to to be a physical therapist. Um, mm. So life's a little bit different from physical therapy nowadays. But I, in my going into my third year of college, I became a resident assistant where I got my dorm room, my own dorm room to myself. So mm -hmm. I got to decorate it. And my best friend came in when I finished and she told me that I needed to check out the interior design department. 
And I didn't even know interior design was something to study, let alone have a career. Um, but once I talked to the department heads, I changed my major immediately. Like I was a, an interior mm-hmm. design major the next day. And it just everything, everything in my life since that day, and I'm pretty sure before then has just completely fallen into place without me chasing something down, without striving for it. It's something that has opened, like a door has opened before I was able to knock on it. Um, Mm -hmm. I was offered a job after college, a semester before I even finished college. Um, I was laid off from that job almost five years later, but that let me lean into blogging. And so my world Mm -hmm. in the digital space of telling stories um, and creating beautiful things and sharing those beautiful things with people put me on the map of, mm-hmm. you know, the digital world. And, you know, Instagram has evolved over several years, but I was one of the first people. Well, as soon as I could get on it, I had an Android. I had to go back. Somebody checked me on this. The Apple users <laughs> had it for a year before Android users could uh, get uh-huh. on. Uh huh. But as soon as it was available, <laughs> I was on it. And have made it a part of my day-to-day life, just not just as a business person, but just as someone that wanted to have community outside of where I was. Um, Mm -hmm. And that want for community is what drives everything that I do. And so I think making Mm -hmm. space for everybody else and sharing my thoughts and ideas in, in the vein of interior design, but showing people that there's a way to think about every aspect of life when it comes to beauty, yeah. as you read my my purpose statement, um, that has connected me to so many amazing people and granted so many opportunities. And if it wasn't for social media and Instagram in and of itself, I wouldn't be where I am today. So is it safe to say that you creating community on Instagram was the door opener to you now being positioned on HGTV and other opportunities that arose from that? Absolutely. That is 1000% correct. Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay. So what do you think it was about your messaging and your storytelling that resonates the most with people? Um, I think it's helpful that I was sharing in the digital world years before it was the thing to do to build a business. Um, It was Mm -hmm. just a matter of wanting to share my story and my day to day life. And it was a way for my my family back at home to keep up with me when I moved five hours away. So they would read my blog, see what my apartment looked like, all of those kinds of things. Um, But it was with Instagram where I was able to connect with other black creatives, especially women. Um, And Mm -hmm. at the time there were very few, if any black interior designers that were seen anywhere. You didn't see us Mm -hmm. on TV. You didn't see us on Instagram. You didn't hear about us blogging. Um, But the more we were able to find each other and connect with this small community of Black women in the creative space, especially the home space, began to grow. And Mm -hmm. it was a huge deal because our homes looked vastly different from the homes of people that didn't look like us. And so Mm -hmm. when the other communities found us, it was like, oh, my goodness, look, this is what y'all's homes look like. And this is their Black interior designers. And so it became this, this awakening to the rest of the world is what it felt like. Um, Mm -hmm. but it absolutely was the vehicle that put me in front of producers when, you know, platforms like HGTV realize, okay, we need more diverse faces or Mm -hmm. we need to talk about, or we need more diverse locations or we need whatever it is. But the people who have like me come from a space of being othered just because of what I look like. Um, it was a fast track to go, oh, okay, that's the girl that's been doing X, Y, and Z for the last several years. Let's go talk to her. Um, Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. yes, my community has grown with me from the beginning. I was the girl with the Afro for a long time. So most Mm -hmm. people just wanted to know what kind of products I used in my hair and they stuck around (laughs) for the interior design. Um, So, but 
from the beginning, just having an authentic voice, since it was something I'd done from the time I typed on my keyboard and posted published on my blog for the first time, everyone just realized they were getting me. And I've yeah. been me since then. So the me you saw 12 years ago is the same me that you get today, mm-hmm. just a lot more things to do and a lot more eyeballs on her mm-hmm. nowadays. And a lot more life lessons too. You have Indeed. evolved as you know, as you, as uh, the world has turned. So, okay, so many people um, develop their profiles and they develop their profiles off of what they think people want to hear from them versus who they actually are. And there is that real big gap between <laughs> their reality and their authentic selves. Mm-hmm. What would you say to the woman who is putting so much effort, right? Trying real hard to show up socially on social media but missing the authenticity. I would say, child, you're going to be real exhausted real fast. (laughs) Um, It is exhausting to be different things to different people. And it's important to find the beauty in your own voice and your own experience and your own life. And that is what people follow other people for. I don't want to Mm -hmm. see something or following something that looks exactly like 50 other things that I can go follow on Instagram. I'm looking for an individual perspective. I want to know what makes you interesting. So if you're working hard to be the bare bones level of what everything else is that's popular, you're missing the mark and wasting your time and exuding a bunch of energy that's not going to get you anywhere. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you should just go with what you know, which is who you are, and you'll attract the people that you feel are part of your community. The thing is you put out what you want to get back. And so it doesn't matter how many people that is or how many followers it is, you're gonna love those five people that show up every day or those 10,000 people that show up every day, but you'll Mm -hmm. end the day knowing all of those people are there because they know you. Right, that's so good. I think sometimes uh, people forget that even the your social persona is part of your life experience. And if it's not fulfilling, if it doesn't reflect your, if it's not a good mirror to who you are, then what's the point of it? What is the point? It's not just a showcase. <laughs> it's not, and and that popularity yeah. contest is is just very archaic. It's like it's it high is. school to think. Yeah, right. <laughs> it is. It is a waste of digital space and valuable time. Um, yeah. 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 I love that you, you, um, you know, as you got into your career, um, that you started building community and you started to wrap your identity inside of that and people really gravitated towards just who you are and what you're about. But how did you know that you were good enough as a designer? Like, how did you, how did you get to the place where you were like, I'm, I'm, I'm nice. Like I do this. Oh, that's very recent, by the way. Really? Um, I was, yes, <laughs> it took winning wow. Design Star on HGTV for me to realize how, I, well, I say, I'll take that back. I've always known I was great at what I did, but interior design is one of those things. It's not, it's not golf or basketball right. or there's no grading. There's no way to compare it or have points per se, when you compare yourself to another designer. So it's very subjective, no matter what. I like what Mm -hmm. I do, and Mm -hmm. I knew people were paying me to do what I do for them. So I'm like, okay, if people are paying me, I'm good enough. Like, I'm I'm great, Mm -hmm. because these people are paying me to do what I do. But it wasn't until I was literally compared to six other designers on a design show where I won because of all of the skills that I developed over the last 15 years of being a designer, that's when I realized, oh, no, you're, you're something different. Like you, mm. you've got a little something mm. extra. So I have the, the skills and knowledge that I garnered from college and life in business. But there are so many things where I was sued by a client or fired from a job or losing my husband where I've had to pivot and accept or choose a different path from what I thought I was going to be leaning into that has taught me Mm -hmm. so many other things just in how to deal with life. And I take that with me into design um, because it's part of who I am. And I believe that is the differentiating factor for me. But 
I wanted design star two and a half years ago. So mm-hmm. yeah, I knew I was good, but I was put on a platform wow. and won against other great designers. So I knew I was real yeah. good then. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm that girl. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm that. Okay. I'm that girl. Got it. Okay. I love mm-hmm. that though, because um, I feel like there are these marking moments, right? In everyone's career. And for anyone who's listening, going, well, I think I'm okay at it. And then, but then you have these moments that really reinforce that you are a star in the sky. Like you really mm-hmm. do belong at the elevated space where you are, because there are times when you have a question of, do I belong? Right. Yes. Like, always. what am I doing here? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How did I get here? What am I doing here? And, and what do you tell yourself in those moments? You're here for a reason. You may not know what that reason is today, but you're here, so do the work. That's all. That's and all I get every day. Work. You do the work. Yeah. You do the work. Yeah, that's good stuff. I love that. So, okay, as we think about um, two and a half years ago, you had that. You know, you have that moment, but then you also is that near the time frame that you lose your husband? Uh, yes. So I came home from Design Star at the end of 2020 and lost my husband about seven months later. Yes. So yeah, yeah. life life came at me very quickly. Um, that was also before Design Star was the George Floyd murder, the pandemic. Yes. Um, that was the first time I left my family for six weeks. Uh, coming home, I came home with so many medical issues because that competition just really (laughs) did me in. I was in the emergency room for the first time in my adult life and high blood pressure, like being medicated. Like it was, it was something else uh, at that time. But also I started shooting my own show, Rental My Rental that summer and the network had fast tracked it. They were like, nope, we want people to see this. Um, So we premiered about six weeks after rapping, which was unheard of. Wow. Yeah. Um, and yes, I lost lost my husband at the exact same time. Um, so yes, my whole entire life. Oh, and my son started middle school all at the same time. Oh my goodness. Right. So <laughs> it was it was a lot. It life came at me fast. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a gumbo, right? Because you have this this incredibly high career moment that mm-hmm. is like marking and defining and it's such a um, a celebratory high. And then you have the most unexpected low happening at the same Absolutely. time, all while your son is making this very big transition. Middle school, if you're not a parent, you don't understand. That's oh, m- middle school is... <laughs> Middle school is the bricks. It's like, okay, this is like, oh my God. (laughs) It's a whole other journey. Yeah, yeah. What do you know now that you've learned since that time frame that, you know, those lessons came fast and furious and there is no manual for that? There is nothing, not a book, a script. There's not a, a person in the world that can give you what, you know, you have to just learn through that. What did you learn through that? I learned that every day that we are allowed to wake up, you have a choice. That life is literally nothing but choices. We have everything in the, in the world that happened to us. There are circumstances that happen to us, but you have a choice. And at the time, there was so much happening. What I clung to, my choice every day was gratitude. Um, mm-hmm. I lost my mm-hmm. husband two weeks shy of our 10 year wedding anniversary. And we were planning Mm. a huge party because the anniversary was happening right around the premiere of the show. Um, And I had so many of the people closest to me expecting me to have this breakdown because it was, it's a big moment. There's all these things happening. But the only thing I could think about was how grateful I was for the 15 years that I had known him and how many Mm -hmm. lessons I learned just from being in his presence. So I was Mm -hmm. definitely heartbroken and grieving his loss, but I chose gratitude and remembering his voice every day and remembering the lessons that I learned and how he supported me and literally was the person that told me to go fly. Like he made me go do that competition. He made me 
ultimately quit my job and bet on myself. He was like, you are a star. Mm. You're a star. And so remembering him and remembering the child that we had raised and how great of a kid he was and understanding that he is his own human and has his own experiences and just being grateful for him and his experience. It was, it was a lesson in choices. Every day Mm -hmm. after that was a lesson in choices. What am I choosing today? I can choose to take the day off and say, forget everything, all my response. I just want to lay here. I want to cry. I want to grieve, or I could choose to live and be grateful for what I have. And you're entitled to whatever choice you make. There's no wrong right. choice. That That is the other thing. You, you There is no wrong choice. It's, you just have to remember it's yours. Um, yeah. But life is a matter of choices and you are what you choose. So remembering mm-hmm. what I wanted, especially long-term, helped me choose what I needed on a day-to-day basis. Mm, that's really good. That is really good. Then as a mom, how do you teach your son to honor, you know, the legacy of his father and his choices? How does that show up for you all? I, my husband and I, from the beginning, wanted to raise a kid that was, that didn't have to go through the things that we went through as kids. My, my Mm -hmm. husband's parents divorced when he was eight and his mom struggled financially. And so did his dad. I fortunately grew up with both of my parents, um, my entire Mm -hmm. life until my mom passed away when I was 23, which was two Mm -hmm. months before I got married. Um, Mm -hmm. but growing up, we were both responsible for so much. I was personally responsible for making straight A's and being great and right. Like failure was not an option. So I was this Uh very high strung type A personality kid. (laughs) And my husband Uh on the other hand was concerned about taking care of his mom and making sure Mm -hmm. his mom wasn't worried. And so he was worried about other things while also being great. He was an athlete and great student and everything. And we just wanted a kid that could focus on being a kid said, I don't Mm -hmm. want my child to have these kinds of pressures because I saw what it looked like amongst my friends and other kids growing up, what it turns into. I'm like, I feel like I turned out pretty great, but I don't want my kids to have these pressures. And so we just focus on him living and existing and being who he is and accepting what he likes and all those things. We realized we were the ground in which the seed were growing in. We had nothing to do with how the seed grew. We just made sure it had an environment to be great. And that is what I carry with me every day. I check in when I let him tell me whatever he wants. He gets to choose the things that he wants to participate in. I accept his efforts. He's a great student. And I get to watch Mm -hmm. him be this great human being without pressuring him to be this great human being. I also lead by example. And just allow him to be a human and not a kid. I see him as a human first and not my child. Like, how would I treat you if I've never met you before? And that's how our interactions go. You get to be a whole human with me and not this person that I have to lord over and control. Mm -hmm. Um, So that, that has made for one of the most beautiful relationships I've been able to be a part of because we trust each other, we can talk to each other, and I just get to see him be this very well-rounded, beautiful human being that is still yeah. doing great at school without me laying down the law or things like that, but uh-huh. just uh-huh. recognizing his humanity and also letting him see mine, apologizing yeah. to him and telling him if I'm having a bad day or if I don't have it today or whatever that is like he gets to see what humanity looks like so he feels okay with being a human too oh i love that isn't it special that you uh you know there i know a lot of people just you know can't stand their kids i'm like i actually uh-huh. like i like my <laughs> <laughs> i like my kids i, like I would yeah. choose them again mm-hmm. i would you know I'll, and i look forward to seeing them like become the adults that yes. they, they're going to be whoever, whoever they become yes. not who i mold them into but i you know right. but however they're led to grow into that but yes. it's cool to hear you say how much you actually like and admire and respect him as your yes. son. 
I absolutely yeah. do, especially coming out of middle school. This has been <laughs> it's yes, so interesting. The, brick. the bricks, <laughs> yes. I mean, he's he's got a mustache and he's in band and there's girls and all kinds of things. Yes. And I'm just like, okay, like the stories yep. are a lot more interesting nowadays. Yes. And yes. it's just, I appreciate what life is like for a 14 year old in middle school in Memphis. Like, okay, okay, yeah. you'll be able to yeah. write a book one day. So it's, it's just, <laughs> it's a form of, it keeps me humble, but it's also entertaining. It's just choosing to see this as a as his book that's being written every day. And right. like, I just get to read it. So I I appreciate him for just being a great, a great kid. A great kid. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. You know, I realized when you were saying that uh, lording over him versus, you know, just kind of guiding is a very different model, right? Than, oh, yes. um, you know, what, I was what we probably in. came from. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Like, yeah, it's a different mm-hmm. because I, I like I'm looking at the choices. I'm like, when I lean back and I really watch my son's 14, my daughter's 11, I watch some of the choice, most of the choices. I'm like, I stand beside most of those. those most of those choices are you're doing good on your yeah. own. Those mm-hmm. are great choices. And then the rest, you know, you have to pat them and cushion, you know, yes. cushion them and give them support. But I really do like. um you know, having have looking at where they are in this world, and they have so much coming at them from every yeah. direction. You got all, Ooh. I mean, just social media alone, just yes. that alone, internet alone, Google alone, yes. uh, YouTube, any of those, uh, yes. that, right? And they have all of that at once, and so that overwhelm. If it if it does what it does to us as adults, I can only imagine how that pressure could overtake them as children. Yes. And even we see stories of kids who are who succumb to those to the pressure of so, of social media. Yes. But watching them navigate those things, I, you know, it makes it easy to okay the sneakers. You, say less. Right. You sneak, that, that. Right. Because the way you're showing up for yourself, you know, the choices you're making, I can I can rock with. Those. I can do yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> you do your part. You do your part. I'll do whatever I can to make sure your part looks good, feels good. All yes. those things. Yes. Yes, I love it. I love it. So now, Carmi on the girlfriend, you have so many great girlfriends I that do. are just rock stars. Look at how you smile <laughs> when you talk about them. That's yeah. the feeling we should have, great girlfriends, when you think about your friend. You shouldn't yes. feel like, yeah, you should feel like, yes, like yes. you just have your whole system just lights up because that's the type of experience you deserve to have in friendship. I want to know, are these, are these like, I've known since elementary, we were we're cousins Mm -hmm. or we met along the way is, or is it a gumbo of all types of friendships that you have going? It is indeed a gumbo. I am still very close with people like my first friends I can think of that I met when I was five. I still talk to them. I don't talk to them as often, but I still connect with them. Where are you? I want to see you. It's every couple months or so. Um, I have friends from the digital space. My best friend in life, I met online through our blogs and didn't meet oh, until five life. years later. And now we're traveling together. Our families are intertwined. Like we're yeah. 10 plus years in the game. And then my core, core ride or dies that I talk to every day, the, the group chat is popping off right now as we speak. <laughs> Tell them I they said, are, hey. I sure will. <laughs> they are women that I met when I found the creative community here in Memphis. Once I found mm. my people, um, these women are from all different backgrounds, from education to medicine and photography. But there's something about all of us that we have. We just have a love for this city and being yeah. there and for each other and the thought of community that. It's just, there's nothing like it there. We can text each other at 2 a.m. if something's wrong. They pick up my son from school if I'm out of town. Like it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. Those core, my core people. Yes, they are last seven years. People, connections I made here in Memphis once I found my community. So what would you say to the woman who's listening who has not found her community? She's on the outside. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's seeing 
all the jam and the jazz of, yes. you know, you navigating with your friends and, you know, people want, they like, I want that too, but I don't know how, mm-hmm. what would you say to the woman, especially Carmion? I, you know, I'm a Memphis girl born and raised. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of my Memphis friends will say, you know, certain things are, is this easy for you to connect or network? You know, because you lived in New York or now you live in L.A. and they think it's easier. And I I, I disagree wholeheartedly. But, I, you no. know, I think it's just who you are and, you know, what what you're designed to bring toward you. But yes. what would you say to the woman who's really like on that struggle bus trying to figure it out? Well, the first thing I would say is, have you taken a look inside and are you the friend that you would want to have? What type of person? Say that five times. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Say that five times in a row. Put a beat yes. on it and turn it into a whole track. That yes. is it. Are you the friend that you're looking for? Are you the person that people can depend on if you want somebody to depend on? Are you that person? And if you're yeah. not that person, what type of person are you to someone that you're looking for? Because you don't have to be mm-hmm. the exact person you're looking for. You could be the yin to the yang of the person you're looking for. And yeah. that's that's what's most important is reflecting on who you are. And I hate this phrase, but what you bring to the table. Like, right. you have to be the person that yeah. somebody wants to connect with. And two, are you putting yourself out there to have a friend? Like, you can't sit yeah. and watch the world pass you by you're sitting in on the park bench and everybody's just going and you're like, why won't anybody be my friend? Have you said hello to anybody? Have you complimented the next? I mean, it's easy to make a friend and a black girl because, hey, you tell me I'm pretty and hey, what, what you else? Got my you, tell, you got my <laughs> <laughs> You tell me you like your my name outfit, again? <laughs> right? It's, it's easy. And Don't it's, talk about my skin or tell me how good I, I'm like, oh, hold on a minute. Exactly. You might want to go to lunch. <laughs> Egg. Because exactly. listen, did I not slide into your DM and say, "Hey, girl, hey, hey listen, girl, hey. I've been keeping up. I love your work, and I want to get you on this part." I mean, it's just a simple. I could have scrolled your gram for hours, and you would have <laughs> never known I was scrolling. Never or I could known. make my move and go in your DM and say, "Hey, I just want to tell you, big ups for the work you're doing." Boom, boom, boom. And you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. you're right, absolutely right. No exactly. one can see you scrolling. No one can see you, you know, peeking in. They can only see you and acknowledge you when you've made your you shoot presence your shot. known. You got to shoot, shoot your, your shot. shot. Shoot your yeah. shot. You only miss the shots you don't. Well, you definitely going to miss the shots you don't take. So Facts. you need to get your reps up. Like shoot your that's shot. That's right. Shoot your shot. And that's really, yeah. the rest is up to the gods and the universe and the stars and whatever. And there are people like me I still make brand new friends to this day. Like I may not have the availability to sit down and have coffee with 92 people a week. I really don't. So don't, don't come looking for me, (laughs) but (laughs) I make new friends every day. I'm inspired by people, especially women that aren't even here, but I have a running list of, okay, next time I'm in New York, I'm hitting up these three women because I love what they do. We've talked online. I just really feel like, I, I have something to offer them, but I just want to get to know them as a person because I just love who they are online. Like there's yep. there's a level of intentionality behind you have to be intentional around the connections that you want to make. Yes, start a conversation. Yes, reach out and ask for that in person if it's possible or a Zoom or a phone call or whatever it is. But you have to be intentional behind it and also yeah. be be the person that you're trying to attract. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, my great girlfriend Tiffany Aliche, the budgetista, said mm-hmm. um, at a recent event, she's like, "You have to give, 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 and then expect to receive." Instead of coming into things wanting people to just give to you, and you constantly yes. taking and pulling and extracting, and you know you empty people fast. out. Yes, you will lose a friend quickly. Lose a friend that, that connection will be cut off. Yeah. Because who has time for that? Yeah. Left on yeah. red, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you can't and come with a, can that... I pick your brain situation. No! It's, it's, don't, don't, that's not how you make friends, by the way. Uh, can I but tell yeah. you those DMs just sit for me? I'm like. They, well, on to the next one. <laughs> 
You can pick it if you if you had listened to one episode of podcast. You know, I actually despise that line. Like, do not. My brain. That's my thought leadership. That's that's how I feed my kids. Like, you. It's not that. It's not that. No. But um, you know, it's interesting because I was in another recent conversation about uh, friendship and that connection, and um, a woman made the point that. Uh, you need to represent your fullest parts of yourself. Let the fullest parts of who you are come alive when you meet people, not the empty spaces, yes. because people can read through the hollowness and it's not appealing to see like, oh, this person has a huge, this person is a lonely person. It wants me to feel mm. all the yes. voids or this person, like, oh, you, you know, is clingy. Me. Yeah, you need it versus you want to enjoy me. And yeah, and we just want to connect and kick back. And Or you're looking to... um be a, become a part of an entire circle of friends versus getting to know one person. So you're using one person as an end and just like, as whoa, whoa wait a minute. Ew. <laughs> Ew. You have to earn your spot in the group text. It's not as simple as just. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to maintain it. You got to maintain yes. it. That's just how it works. You do. Yes. It's work. Yeah. It's work. It is another relationship. So, yes, once, yeah. once you make the connection, you have to maintain it. So, yeah, yeah, it's just like any yeah. other functioning and productive and healthy relationship. It's work. Yeah, for sure. I love that. So, OK, I know I have to let you go, but what's next for you? What do you, What's up next in Ooh. your mind and your spirit and your being? We got a coffee table that book coming. No, is I do. <laughs> <laughs> I am in I am in the middle of writing my book. I am. I have a coffee yes. table book. I'm actually like Feel you it. get it. You get it here first. I'm announcing it very soon to the public. But yes, you. Get <laughs> this is like oh the four. <laughs> It's just it, it's just seeping out of your skin. It's like I can see it, I feel it, I can smell it. It's it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you're you're I getting have a book, book right now. Yes, okay, I have a, a book coming out. Um, it should be publishing um, late next year. Um, but it is my design philosophies, but also in the vein of my purpose, like this discovering the beauty and all the things around you. So, so yes, there's a book coming. I am in the middle of shooting my second show, um, which will also be releasing in 2024. Um, yeah. And then lots of other very fun partnerships and deals are in the works. There's plenty. Like, I feel like I'm announcing something every week, <laughs> which yes! is wonderful. Yes, may it, may it continue. Yes, continue. Yes, yes, that is fantastic. <laughs> May Thank that you. continue. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Carmion, for the great girlfriends who want to keep up with you that are not already following you, where can they connect with you? They can connect anywhere they see Carmion Hamilton. My website is CarmionHamilton.com. Um, I am Carmion Hamilton on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, everywhere else. There's a digital platform. Um, I am Carmion Hamilton, and it's three small words, car me on. Um, but that's where you can find me. I love it. I love it. I have had so much fun with you today. Your spirit is just beautiful. Just as beautiful as you oh, are on the outside. You. So I, I, I knew thank this was going to be good. And I, I just appreciate you. And I'm so proud of you for the work you're doing. It's just wonderful to see you shining. Wonderful. I appreciate that so much. Hearing that that's one of the greatest compliments that you that I know to give a person is I'm proud of you. Um, and I mean, we can be proud for the smallest things. My friends were proud of yeah. me for getting dressed day to day back in my yeah. deepest, darkest time. So thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I, listen, and you, you've got a prayer coming from me for the road ahead because I know it's still all fresh for you. So I want to thank yes. you for being so vulnerable and sharing your story as well, because I, I, I can only imagine what you experience. And I'm just you know, very, very, very proud and honored to have you on today. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor to be here. I'm happy to now be a girlfriend. Um, yeah, a great girlfriend. Just, Come on. A great girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I love this platform. I love what you do. I love the message that you and all of your guests share. It's 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 needed in our community oh, and beyond. So So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More to come, girl. More to come.
Yes, I hope so. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Great girlfriends. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us an iTunes review. Make sure you drop into Carmian's DMs and say hello. Do not pick her brain. Do not. <laughs> pick our brain and let us know if you want to hear anything else um, about this episode will be available on iTunes and also on YouTube. Thank you so much, Carmian, for being on today. We really appreciate you you being a great girlfriend. Thank you for having me. All right, great girlfriends. Did you enjoy this week's episode of the podcast? If so, would you please give us your amazing review on iTunes? Every single review helps another great girlfriend get plugged into the podcast and the community. Speaking of community, make sure you join our Facebook group at The Great Girlfriends. Follow us on Instagram at The Great Girlfriends and on Twitter at The underscore Great GFS. I'm Sybil Amuti and I'm out. Peace. Yay Networks.